Hello, Astro Harry. What madness is this? It's an Altas telescope and it has been guided. How do we do that? Let's find out. So what do you need to guide with an Alt-As telescope? Well, it's the same as with any other telescope. You need three main things. So you need an AstroCam or a camera that can do exposures of a few seconds. Uh, you need a guide scope, which is one of these. And you also need a method of putting your guide scope onto your telescope. And in this case, there is a nice little dovetail bracket. Some of these guys scopes come with the brackets, some you have to buy separately, so it's just a case of looking for the right solution. Um, in specifically for this, I have a, a T7 Astro Cam, which is a clone of the ZWO ASI 120 color. Nice little camera this. And then this is a it's called Angel Eyes, basically it's a, it's a no-name um, Chinese mass manufactured guide scope and it's 50 millimeters but to be honest it doesn't really matter what you use as long as this can do decent length exposures and this is gives you allows you to give you a picture so what do we do now well basically we connect everything up together so we've got the guide scope there which sits in the little the dovetail bracket of the finder uh, which is great we've put the little astro cam in and we've got the usb cable usb cable then runs to a mini pc or you can use a laptop or whatever you've got to hand then finally you need to connect to the mount so in this case i'm using the handset handset there usb cable there it runs all the way around and it goes to the pc so that's how you connect all of this up together to do to be able to guide but well, the first thing you need to do is to be able to control your mount now there are many very solutions to this um, but because this is a Celestron telescope I'm using Celestron CPWI which is great software um, this has the drivers with it the ASCOM drivers which will then talk to PhD2 which is our next piece of software if you have a different uh, alt as mount you just need to do a little google and find out what's the software or what the ASCOM drivers are that control your mount, you're bound to find the answer. Then the second thing you need to do is to install PHD2, which looks a bit like this. And um, both these sub pieces of software are free, so there's no problem with that at all. So that's all you need to do to actually set up your um, your PC and laptop or laptop, whatever it is you're using for that. Then we actually need to set up the uh, PHD2 to talk to uh, both the mount and the camera, because what PHD2 does is it reads from the camera and it goes right, I need to do, adjust the mount and then it sends a command to the mount. So in, in simple terms, it's very straightforward. However, <laughs> we're gonna find out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is connect to the mount and you can do this during the day, you can do it wherever. So you don't need to be actually out doing some observations. So I'm gonna connect to the hand controller and it's gonna say, you know, hello, thank you very much. So manual alignment, fine, no problem at all. And then I'm gonna open up PHD2. So there are two things we need to do with PHD2. First thing we need to do is connect to the camera. And the second thing that we need to do is connect to the mount. So I've already got this set up. Um, it's not a problem. I will talk you through all the settings. I've just done this because it's during the day and the weather forecast is gonna be cloudy for a week. So there's no point in waiting for it. So the first thing you do is connect to both of these things and your little red things turn green. So there we are, connect, connect, and all's well and all's good. Brilliant, okie dokie. So all of the fun of this is in the little brain icon there. So you click on the brain and this is all of our settings. So what I will do is I'll talk you through what works for this setup. With PhD2, you need to experiment and do lots of like, you know, try it for yourself. There is a wizard that will take you through this and there's a guide that will take you through this as well. But I am just gonna show you the simple stuff so that you know what to do. So the first thing I do is click on camera and there's a few little settings there. I usually set the settings to between one second and five seconds. I think any longer, you're missing the point of guiding, but you need to give it at least a chance to get uh, there. Most of these values are automatically filled in when you set it up, so that's not a problem at all. Then the guiding. So this is the, this is the interesting part. So the main part for this, is despite what the the world will tell you don't use multiple star guiding the reason is because on an altas mount it's rotating so therefore these stars are moving in like a circle around themselves so you do not want to use multiple stars it just confuses the mount and you just end up with, with terrible uh, terrible guiding so you don't click that little um option and the last thing is the algorithm so there are pages and pages and pages of guides on this 
but I like to keep things nice and simple. So what you want to do, you want to do hysteris on both RA and declination. Um, you may run the guide wizard, it may suggest something different, but just remember PHD2 does not know this is an Altaz mount, it thinks it's an EQ mount. So there's no such thing as right extension and declination, it's up, down, left, right. Um, I like to keep the hysteria nice and low and the aggressiveness nice and low as well. These values depend on two things. First of all, how good your seeing is, so how, you know, is your, is your night sky nice and clear or do you get a little bit of haze or do you get a little bit of, of heat and the stars move around or not? If you keep things nice and low, yes, it takes a little bit of time for it to center, but it also means that you have um, much smoother guiding. Um, pixels are keep to 0.2. Uh, again, these are just sort of suggested mounts and, every, uh, mounts and then everything else I leave alone. Um, because the mount just the, the PHD2 doesn't understand that this is an alt as things like backlash and stuff Yes, the mounts have backlash, but they have backlash in different axes to how the how the software works And that's what I would do just and then just leave them as that so you click on ok And then you'll see these values at the bottom But what you can do when you're doing your little sessions is you can actually be playing around with these values if you find it's just you know your, your guiding's not stable or you've got a problem you can just play around with these options i also this option down here i keep this to two seconds you don't want this to be too low because if you set it to one second or half a second what it's doing is it's chasing that seeing you know as, as stars twinkle it's constantly adjusting the mount because it's a little bit to the left a little bit to the right you want to give it a couple of seconds two to three seconds is where i think the sweet spot is any longer and you're missing the point then that, that, that your objects are moving out of out of center and you're having a bit of an issue so that's the sort of settings that i use for this particular setup um, it's not not going to cause you any problems at all the other thing that's really really important is that you need to set up a dark library which i'm not going to do in this demonstration but basically you set up a dark library for your camera and what it does is it takes uh, loads of frames loads of calibration frames so it gets rid of things like hot pixels because what can happen is that you can have a, a pixel on your screen that's come from the camera rather than come from the guide scope and it just thinks it's a star and it will just go it will just go there's not a problem because that's bang in the middle because obviously it's not going to move and you end up with rubbish um you end up with rubbish guiding which is not good the other thing is calibration so i always set this up to calibrate at every on every session so um again it's part of the settings but uh when you do your first uh guide of the night it will calibrate so what it will do it move it up down left right and it will work out you know where where the sort of um, inaccuracies are on your mount uh, and then compensate for it. So I would definitely suggest that you calibrate at the beginning of everything. But apart from that, everything is fine. Astro Harry, top, top tip. You're going to do this for the first time. Do it when the moon's out because it gives you a nice bright target to help you with focusing and to give you something really good to center on. Trust me. So this is where it's really handy having the moon out. So I've got the moon in uh, sharp cap using my normal camera my um my qhy camera that i use for all my uh, most of my imaging so as you can see the moon's out that's great and what i can do is i can switch to my guide camera which is just there and it will just flip from one to the other and um, it means that you can then look at centering the object so i'll just knock that down a little bit because it's a bit bright uh, there we go. So that's the moon. So it means you can help you to center the object, but also it means it can help with your focusing as well. So as you can see, um, it's a little bit out of focus. So what I can do then is make some adjustments. And so I know that both the focus is right and also this is in the center. You don't have to worry too much about um, it being bang on the center because guiding isn't really that important as long as it's in the general ballpark. But um, it's just another reason why having the moon is really useful. So here we are with our PhD2. Um, what I've done is I've just pointed the telescope to a random piece of sky. You know, I don't even know what constellation this is. Um, so you can see we've got a few stars, so that's brilliant and great. So uh, all I did was press the little restart button, which is down here, and it does this. So you've got two choices. You can either pick a star to guide on, or you can let the, the software do it for you. If you press the little star, it will actually pick one for you and it's picked the brightest one in the middle great not a problem at all so then the next thing we do is that we do the calibration stage so I've got my setup so it automatically calibrates every time um, I start a session so if you click the little green 
Crosshair thing. Oh, by the way, I just thought I'd say that I've also also aligned the CPWI. So I picked two targets, which was the Moon and Arcturus, and I've used them for a very rough alignment. Um, so so that's all all working fine. So um, as you can see, it's going through its calibration steps now. So um, at the bottom, you'll notice it's going on about west and north, things like this. This usually takes about a minute, but it's well worthwhile because it means that PHD2 has calibrated towards what the target you're going for, but also if there's anything weird with your mount. Um, especially I find uh, further uh, north or further higher up in the sky that it points. I find that it has discrepancies much more than when it's lower in the sky, but that might just be a quirk of my setup. So, um, so we just let this do its thing, and I'll come back to you in a second, and uh, I'll show you what it's done. So um, the calibration routine has finished, and um, I always get this message. I always get this message at the top about calibration, but again, that's fine because I don't think PHD2 is it's sending commands and the mounts doing weird things because it's expecting a, a, an EQ mounts response and not an Altazis mount response. So I think that's what that is in there for. Um, now, we usually, when I finish calibrating, it usually takes a few seconds just to settle down and get the object back in the center, which as you can see from the little graph here, is is part of the score so you've got loads of options with phd2 in terms of how it shows this data so you just need to get these axes right so that it's it's right for your monitor or for your setup so you can, you can play around with the, the the accuracy and also all these things so you can you know you can see as much information as you need to see so i mean for me i set it to be up and down four pixels um which seems to suit me fine uh, but you know yeah, everybody's different in what they sort of do so as you can see it's settling down so the um the the, the blue line is the ra axis and the, the the red line is deck but as i keep saying it, it's not really it's you know we, this mount is a is an up down left right type of thing so you can see the little wiggly worm is gradually sort of you know settling down to that so when before i start imaging i let this thing just do its uh which thing it's a hazy night tonight which means that as you can see when you're looking at the picture it's sort of going gray and light and coming back again and that's because as i say because of the haze and the, the camera is adjusting its um its gain so uh that's it so it's not the perfect night to be doing this but i just thought you know i can't do any astro stuff so i might as well do this sort of video so it's doing that so what you can do is that if you think actually this isn't going to get itself sorted what you can do is play around with these numbers so if you find that your graph is you know it's sticking and it's not actually coming down to the middle which is what we want you can play around with the, the aggressiveness and the hysterious settings as well so what i could do with the um with the ra is just up the aggression slightly so what that'll do is it'll force it to come down quicker the problem with that though is you get overcompensation with these mounts because of the gearing on them um, it can you get backlash basically and you, you end up with issues about it bringing it back to there but certainly if i find that there's just a just a, a, an object that's just wandering out of you and it's just getting worse and worse and worse I, I boost these scores up a little bit and then when it comes back to something like normalities i then kick it back down to 10 or something so you need a little bit, a little bit of patience but it, i think that phd2 does absolute wonders when you think about it's not really designed for this so I'm a, I'm a massive, massive fan of, of how that's doing. So as you see, it's just it's just going on a wander again. So I'm just going to up the aggression and um, that would just bring it down a little bit more. Uh, and then we can sort of see where we go with that. Um, what you also have is all these statistics on the right hand side. Now, the people who have got brilliant mounts that have been tuned and cost thousands of pounds obsess over these. And you're sort of industry standard, if you like. You're looking at about between one and three arc seconds which is the which is this me measurement here so ours is at seven but as you can see we haven't even you know we're not we're not getting ourselves sorted here so it's just starting to settle down now and you see you've got your little those two lines are converging and they're, they're sort of behaving themselves as he says it jumps up a little bit you're going to get this you're going to get this with a with a with a celestron slt mount because the gearing it just isn't made for, for guiding um, that you get horrendous backlash and everything but that's that's not bad actually that I'm quite happy with that so when you when you're sort of okay with how things are doing you can just clear this off and then it means you're getting some sort of um, sane numbers for your guiding um, so what I would then do now is pop into sharp cap or whatever it is I'm doing and start 
doing um, an imaging session. And the, the key with guiding is that if you're getting dice images, if you're not getting trashy frames, then perfect. You know, you don't have to worry too much about these lines. I have spent nights messing about with these settings, trying to get them perfect. And the, the thing is, though, is that you, you might get them perfect for, for that particular object at that particular time. But as soon as you go looking for other stuff, uh, because of the, the the way that an altar's mount works is that you may look for something else in the sky uh, in a different part and it just goes skew with so uh, you know you've got to be careful that but that's that's pretty okay I don't like having my um, aggression too high because I'll show you why so if I put this up to um, if I put it up to 100 each you can see why we don't like to have high aggression so what what you end up with um, is like a sawtooth type effect so the the mount is constantly swinging from one to the other and what will happen eventually is that you'll just end up with this like jaggedy line so you don't want to have um, high aggression on your um, on your, your your guidance so you can see we had a nice sort of you know this curve was smoothing out and sorting itself out but look every opportunity it gets it's it's adjusting and so you're getting this up down up down up down and that just causes it problems with you with your images because um they're just going to be juddery and again that's a combination of the the mounts but also uh the seeing you know as this star is twinkling away it's uh <laughs> you know it, it's that that it's actually compensating for not for the uh not for the mount or for, for guiding as it were so that's why i like nice calm settings 10 and 10 or 20 and 10 just to sort of you know it just so it just didn't overreact to it because i don't go for massive length exposures because it's on an altez mount so i go for 30 seconds max um i might do 60 seconds if i'm using my dslr because it has a different um focal uh, field of view, sorry. So I've got a little bit more room for manoeuvre. But if I'm doing um, small objects in my in my astro cam, I will just keep this around ten and ten, twenty and ten, whatever. And this this sort of thing is absolutely fine. So if I just uh, clear that off, clear that off, and then we'll just we'll let this run for just another ten or fifteen seconds, and you get an idea of the of the sort of numbers that you're looking for as it shoots up and proves. <laughs> <laughs> no proves that I'm a, I'm a complete little liar but uh, you know anything between one and three seconds is perfect because you're not going to get anything more than that with um yeah, with, with the setup that we've got and that's fine and you can always play around with these these settings everybody's everybody's setting is different but these this seems to work for me and uh you know i'm quite happy with it so this is this is how you guide with a um with an Altas mount, in this case a Celestron SLT Astro Fire mount, and a, uh, a standard guide cam uh, guide telescope, which is a 50 mil, and uh, a cheap uh, Astro cam, um, and uh, it's perfectly feasible. And with a bit of patience and a little bit of fine tuning, you can get you know you can get this graph down to uh, you know so it's it's bombing away quite nicely. But what you don't want to do is do it when it's hazy. And when the moon's out, because <laughs> you're not going to get good results with your with your astro cam. Anyway, thank you very much for joining us. Cheers. <laughs>